This is episode 99 of our podcast. Woo! Hey, how's it going, everyone? So we have Chris mm-hmm. Thomas Ma with us. I said it right. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. You're on the you're on the episode before hundredth episode, so it's crazy. Oh really? That's special. My first time having me on, guys. Yeah, thanks for coming on after we had another guy have to drop for some reason, um, work or something. So yeah, um, yeah, things happen. So yeah, you make comics and stuff. What what do you do with that? Um, I draw, <laughs> write, create characters and all that, but, um, right now I'm kind of focusing more on my, uh, writing, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was distracted at first for a bit. I was wondering if I should, you know, keep talking. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Yeah. So what, what, uh... uh what what uh inspired you to start making comics? Like, uh, have you have you always been interested in comics? Did you pick them up more recently in life, or? Um, I've always been interested in comics. So I, I think where I got my love for it was the first Spider Man, the Tobey Maguire. Like then after that, I just had to read all the Spider Man comics. And that's kind of mm-hmm. like where I really grew this fascinated by him. Never since. Yeah. And then earlier, before that, I would draw all the time, like Ninja Turtles. So nice. that's kind of where my, my drawing came from. So I kind of, I would kind of mix them. But um, yeah, but now what inspires me is just to make like fun comics that I would love to see in a Saturday morning cartoon, you know? That's awesome. That, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, definitely the Saturday morning cartoons uh, need need to get some improvements. You need to bring back some of the classics. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love them. No, that's cool. Did you ever play the old Spider-Man video games, like on PlayStation One? Oh yeah, I love those games. Like when back when the only person that, that can move his mouth was Venom. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I forgot about that. Even James Jameson, or, or, or what's his name? JJ, JJ, wait, what's his whole name? J- yeah. JJ. Yeah. Uh, JJJ. Oh, it is JJ Jameson. Okay, yeah, three J's. Yes, yeah. yeah, so JJ Jameson. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like, yeah, even he didn't have his mouth move when they showed him. I forgot about that. Yeah. Have you guys played the, the new one, the PS4 one? Yeah. I've yeah, seen it played. It. I've never played good. it. I tried to 100% it, which I never tried doing in a game, but I just yeah. wanted to. And I almost did it, and then the PlayStation 4, like, died. So I was like, cool. Oh. Thanks, Universe. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I don't actually play video games, but my brother does, so I watch him. But, like, from what I saw, it was amazing. Like my yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's the same here. I, I saw my little brother play it. It looked phenomenal. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, want a playstation 5 just so i can get the new one that is yeah. coming out like next year or something like that yeah the, the models one was okay but it wasn't as good as the first one like the like the og one you mean yeah the, the original one was way better in my opinion even though models wasn't bad you know? yeah it's actually interesting uh earlier you mentioned uh you were kind of like inspired by the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which, you know, looking at the artwork, I can kind of see that. But do you, do you know what the other one it makes me think of? Uh, did you ever watch uh, Ben 10? Oh, Ben 10. Was like the original yeah. one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah that's, what, really that's what that reminds me of, the artwork. It kind of gives me that uh, that old Ben 10 cartoon. Because, um, yeah, it, it was it was very uh, – like vibrantly colored, uh, very bright scenes, um, and like the details on what you were supposed to focus on. So like it, it's, a, I was just like looking through it, and I was just thinking, I'm like, that's what it reminds me of. But yeah, definitely, I can see the old uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cartoon. Uh, like that look is very cool. Thanks, man. And the pizza. <laughs> oh yeah, love pizza. Yeah. I, I uh, like the Canada Bear, dude. That's. <laughs> That's oh yeah, it. me yeah. too. I'm like a huge fan, so when I came up with the idea, I just had to talk to Paul and um, uh, I forget the other guy's name, but I'm a huge fan of them since like day one. 
So I'm like, this would be the perfect comic for uh, Cookie the Collectors to love. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah. Yeah, you have like different like Earths or like universes or whatever. So do you have like a multiverse or what? I try not to focus on the multiverse too much just because people this because like everyone's doing it now. But like I, I do have story ideas for different like alternate universes that I love to go with sometimes. Like there was a um code pop story, which if you follow me, you can read it for free on um webtoons. But it's like an alternate universe of what Code Pop would be if she isn't what she is now. So, like, yeah, I'm going to do more stories like that eventually, but I don't want to get people focused on, oh, this is a multiverse before, you know, I get everything else yeah. solidified. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have a multiverse. Um, we talked about that in our last episode with uh, Tom Rash. Um He's not really huge into multiverse either, but we uh, yeah. we have like a realm, like another realm, so people can go through. Oh, and we yeah. don't have like um, like religion, like you have religion, hmm. but we don't have religion, yeah, yeah. so we have like uh, which is kind of hard to uh, write. Yeah, every, every once yeah. in a while, we're like someone says, "What the hell?" We're like, "Oh yeah, they wouldn't. We can't say that because that yeah. wouldn't there wouldn't be a reference point." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you can say like "goddamn" because. That's not a thing, so it's like it's really hard to like actually like write when I'm like, oh, I can't say that. Um, yeah, he catches me way more often because I'm like, oh yeah, this like we don't want it to be too aggressive. We're not trying to drop f bombs right here. We're just trying to like you know get a point across that they're frustrated, and like that's when it's really hard. Like it's very hard to use like a a, a tamer like swear when you can't use like yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah I, I never yeah, thought about it like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, we, yeah, I don't think we thought about it until the first time uh, there was a scene where someone was like, "Oh, what the hell?" And then we're like, "Oh yeah, we got rid of religion. That wouldn't, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be a thing. Like you wouldn't know that that's a thing if you don't have that." So, like, yeah. it, 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 we kind of set up that rule initially, um, <clears throat> not to like, not to get rid of religion. It was mostly because we didn't want, um, you know, we didn't we didn't want it where like someone could die and now they're in some other world and then they can get brought back. We want it so that if our characters die, like that is where it ends. Um, so it's not so much that we want to get rid of the religious part; it's we want to get rid of the part where like, you know, oh, our favorite character died. Could you bring him back? And it's like, no, he's dead. Like yeah. that's it. That's how this works. Um, so instead, we still have like um, like another realm, which is like a magical realm, and that's where like magic can get pulled into our realm. But even still, like that, like there's nothing in that realm that would allow someone to, you know, bring someone back from the dead if it's not going to be in some zombie esque format or like, uh, you know, not you know something like that. Um, but yeah, no, it, we 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 actually decided though instead of building out a multiverse ourselves, we have it so that in our magical realm, because most comics have some other realm, whether it is like a heaven and hell or it's like just like a magic realm. And because of that, we decided to make it where uh, in those worlds, through those magical realms, they can enter our magical realm. And that's kind of the idea. So, like, we didn't build out a multiverse so that we have, like, multiple Peter Parkers, right? We didn't want that. We didn't want to have multiple uh, John Benson, one of our characters. We wanted it so that if we wanted to ever cross over to another universe for, like, entertainment sake or, like, uh, we had to, like, call for a great battle or something like that, then we could do it that way. Uh, so that's kind of like the the method that we went with, um, but yeah. So, you, but yours is the purpose of yours more so in that direction, where the goal isn't to like just bring other characters back in, or is it like what's the purpose of your multiverse? Uh, for me, like the <laughs> purpose of the multiverse is just like I have so many ideas for like one character that it kind of gives me an excuse to um to do an go another direction with it. Also, I love designing characters, so now I just use another design too. So it's not so like it, it won't be used for if someone's gonna get killed off, but more as more like oh here's you know one character that's popular. What would I do if it was a different universe? I was, I was gonna ask more so closer to like the what if uh, mentality, like trying to figure out how to like what if this was a totally different scenario as opposed to what I currently have going on. Yeah, so it's like yeah, that's cool. Like one is what if um 
Like for the code pop story of five page one that I wrote as what if internet didn't just didn't go off and she didn't unplug at all, what kind of person would she be? And then there's some other ones that, like I have in mind of uh what if someone never fell in love with this person? So it's more of a what if than more than you know, I'm bringing this person back. Yeah, no, I, I like I that. Hope, cool. Yeah, which I hope the Mar- Marvel doesn't do with Doctor Strange and bring back Tony. Because they kind of do that with Loki, you know? Yeah. yeah. Tom Cruise might be uh, Iron Man. But... I hate that idea so much. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like Tom Cruise, and I don't know why. It's like just one of those actors I don't like. Just... Yeah. There's like so many different actors who can play a different alternate universe. Tony. Yeah, I was gonna say I think that's the more the thing. Like I don't have a problem with Tom Cruise. Like he's cool in the movies he's in. Like you know, Speed, Mission Impossible. Like you know, he is a cool action character like that. But because like we, I think it's it's I recognize him so much as an action character. I don't want to see him as a superhero character. Like, I don't want to see Iron Man and be like, oh, I yeah. know who that is. Because when Robert Downey Jr., yes, he was a big name, but he was still, like, he became more famous, way more famous because of, like, Iron Man, right? Like, that's what I, I associate him solely with that now. And, yes, I can see him in another movie and still enjoy it. But, like, I like he is our Iron Man, right? Like, that's why, like, yeah. you know, even you said Tobey Maguire was the first Spider-Man. Like, even though I, like, I think Tom Holland is, like, like the perfect Spider-Man, like a young kid who's like, yeah, he literally like is so such a kid that he like spoil alerts his own movies, you know, like right, he spoils his own movies when yeah. he like tells people. So like, <clears throat> he's like such a perfect role for it. But like, I still picture Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man if somebody thinks like says Spider-Man, and it's just because that's yeah. like how we got introduced to it. I agree. Yeah. But then yeah. what you were saying about uh, if I can. Like, I'm sorry, if you're changing the subject, I just want to say this real quick. Like when you're talking about no re- no religion in your um in your books, it's funny. I had somewhat the same problem with Base Force. Because in Base Force, you know, I believe in God, so God is is what's the primary, you know, it's what's real in that universe. So when I got to uh, make a character like Thor, which is in um Chapter four, I believe. I just changed her from being a goddess to being an alien. And like I caught that right at, at the time before it was printed. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty uh, interesting because um like I think one of the other big problems too by getting rid of religion, like whether it's uh, Christianity or even like the old Nordic gods or things like that, it's actually kind of difficult because we like we can't pull from like a mythos like for example um thor in the marvel universe is uh like you know they consider themselves gods but like you know that's just a title bestowed upon them they're just aliens to us right and and so it's interesting to like to think uh, think about that because they can still pull from that mythos that oh they visited here long ago but because we have no religion in our world like there isn't even like the opportunity to go, oh, like that Thor or that, uh, you know, Ga- you know, Ra, like from Egypt, like all of those religions that have like really iconic figures can't pull in. So we have to make up uh, like our own versions of like monolithic Titan-esque style beings without without being able to even like attach it to that like we, we obviously like every superhero has an attachment to it like you mentioned spider-man was one of your inspirations there's going to be things like super strength that are inevitable that you're going to have with your characters that uh you know it's going to come from the fact that you have you like w- once you've read about something you can't forget about it right yeah. like once you learn that it'd be cool if lightning could come out of your hands and or a hammer or whatever it might be like you can you can figure that out and go okay like maybe I'll just change it a little bit so like we can change stuff but it is it is kind of interesting like when we come across stuff we're like oh yeah we can't do that like how do we make this so that it is as unique as we can get it but people still can enjoy the character right like so that, that's something um, interesting yeah do you yeah do you do like a lot of world building and stuff in your comics yet or um somewhat. I don't know. I, I've never really been that much into uh, world building, or at least like in the sense of 
here's a bigger book of how my world is, but just kind of figuring out as we go. I'm more into like who the characters are and like their stories like that. I don't know if that makes sense, but oh yeah. 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 Yeah, we kind of, sort of figure it out as we go because we like. Yeah, it's like, like a combination. <laughs> I, yeah, I my have world this, world. yeah, yeah, I have like all this stuff, um, and Dylan comes up with some ideas, and then what our like last step of creating a comic is like uh, adding little Easter eggs throughout the comic as we're like going to print it, and we're like, oh, we're gonna put this here, and like some people will notice it, some people won't. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, do you do any of that, like uh, Easter eggs, where like you leave stuff in there that you know might be a secret for now, but it'll make sense later? Oh yeah, I I did that a lot. Like a lot of threads that I pulled in uh, Base Wars Volume One are going to be touched on in um, Volume Two, and then in the upcoming comics that I'm coming out with, um, Base Wars and Fairy Girl. And also, at the end of um, uh, Base Force, I actually threw in like a, a, a little like cliffhanger that's not that important. But I'm going to keep pulling that thread each, each volume. So I, I really get into that too, but I also try to make sure that, you know, when you read it, it feels complete. Yeah, that, that's one of the other tricky things. Um, that with, with world building, if you go too intense, you, you can like end a comic book and not have like any conclusions like uh like like the last star wars <laughs> yeah. I, I won't go i won't bring that up again because we delved into that in the previous pod podcast but but like yeah like sometimes like if you open too many plot holes or you have too many segments in your story and then all of a sudden the comic ends and you leave the you don't leave the reader wanting more you leave the reader disappointed and so yeah it's important to like close loops um in your stories yeah right I, I threw in some some Easter eggs and all that, like and cliffhangers there. But I was like telling everyone in my writing team, my creative team, that I want this to be like if I never decide to do one, people will be satisfied. But if I do one, people will be excited. Yeah. Because like there's been too many times where I read a comic, especially an indie one, and like they don't explain really anything, and I'm just confused. So I was trying to get away from that. Yeah, I think if you have like a planned uh, series of comics, there's certain things that you can kind of leave like for like other comics. But I, I think that yeah, it's, it's better to have it where like you could just end at any moment and like the and they'd be okay with it. Like you know, oh that was a really good run. I wish there was more, but you know, uh, you know, like, that's definitely a good thing. But uh, I do like having stuff go from comic to comic. I, I guess like if you release three comics at once, kind of thing then you can leave like massive cliffhangers where like I'm not freaking out waiting for the next one because you've already released all three. But if you're going to release one at a time, like most comic creators do, you know, it's best to have like, even if you have a six part series planned, uh, making sure each one has a conclusion at the end, even if there's a cliffhanger for the next one. Yeah. And honestly, that's, I feel like that's more of like a, a mainstream luxury. Cause like, they know when the comics are going to come out bi monthly, but we don't. So, like, we could probably make three issues, but not get to four or six. Yeah. And people are just left hanging. Yeah. We we came out with uh, our comic, Inc., um, 2019, and it's now 2022. And it's yeah. finally going to hopefully come out this year. The um, second issue, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, like, Travis Gibb and, like, other people want to read it. I was like, that's going kind of cool that other people want to read it. But um, oh, yeah. yeah, like I have to wait for the artist to be available <laughs> yeah. in order to do that. And he had he was working on another comic of ours, so like I was like, oh well, yeah. This has yeah, to like, like with um the new comics that are coming out now, Base Force versus Trouble Fury and um uh Fishers of Clay Girl, I would want it to be like a full six issues, but now I'm just more into one shots. Um, so there are self-contained stories, but also there's a lot of story in them. Yeah. Because uh, I got inspired to do that by reading an uh, uh, um, issue of Jerry Love, I forget which issue. But I was like, man, it's like I read a whole movie, and I still wanted some more, but I felt content. So that's kind of like my goal with my comics. Yeah. 
That's definitely a good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. So you uh, have a Kickstarter coming out on the third. Oh yeah. Yeah. I can't wait for that. <laughs> can't wait to be anxious for an entire like month. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, no. Greg's, that's Greg's favorite part is, is just sitting there wondering whether or not, you know, it's going to get funded for the you, entire 30 days. Like what, do you do like what everybody else does? Um, you just keep refreshing it every five seconds. This time, I'm, like last time I launched it and I put my phone away for a few hours and I uh, walked back to it. People like, it funded. And I was like, oh, thanks. You're, f- yeah, that funded like that. Didn't you get yeah. like thousand dollars or something crazy? Oh yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Was like how, wait, how much did you get? He got like twenty thousand dollars or something. Damn. Yeah. So he already has like a hundred and like three followers on like the preview link. That yeah. We're gonna put Excellent. Yeah. But, um, yeah. You, yeah. This time I'm gonna. This time I'm gonna launch it and then go to Red Lobster so I can not freak out about <laughs> it. It's like a celebration. <laughs> I don't know why yeah. Red Lobster was so much funnier like that. Like, <laughs> just like I'm gonna get a Red yeah. Lobster. And I'm just gonna like wait it out. <laughs> yeah, the first Kickstarter yeah. that we did, I uh, that one was successful. Um, we uh, I kept refreshing every like five seconds, and then like the one after that, I was kind of doing that, but I actually was like trying to go to sleep because I work overnights. So like I launch it in the morning, and I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want to stay up all day. So I actually like uh, woke up to like a bunch of like notifications like oh back 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 I'm like, oh, that's, awesome. yeah. that's a good feeling i'll tell you that yeah people actually want to read what you're doing yeah <clears throat> yeah so uh and we talked before i pressed record um that you like to have it done like a comic done like 99 percent or whatever yeah pretty much i, I yeah. want to make sure that it was done like my my fear, like my worst fear, is that it doesn't, and then I have to uh, let backers down. So I pretty much want it all the way done. So it, it's pretty much going to be done by the time I launch it. I mean, or close to when it's done. So Greg's it's like, Greg's over there, like, <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. I wish, <laughs> I wish I thought of it. <laughs> I, I hear horror, horror stories about how people will think it's going to get done. And then someone on the creative team backs out, and then, you know, it's not yeah. done, and that reputation is ruined. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah we're we're one of the, we're one of those stories, but we actually were able to get it resolved because like we you know we're never gonna like let our backers down. Like you know, I think worst case scenario, Greg or I would learn how to draw if we needed to. Like you know, we're gonna make sure these get created. But um, yeah, we had it where uh, one of our. Uh, Kickstarters, we had two comics we were releasing, and the same creator was going to do both, and one of them was a re-release of our first issue, so that the story, so we were expanding our time, like our story, but the first story didn't have enough context to make the second story make sense, so we were rewriting that and redrawing that, and after our uh, illustrator for the second issue finished and he was supposed to start the first, he was came in a big project, and he wasn't able to get to our project. And we're like, uh oh, <laughs> like, so we had to run around looking for creators and like very quickly, like we, like, cause we, again, we're also not going to just uh, dump out garbage. We had to like go through a bunch of illustrators. We had to have them draw up, uh, what's it called? Uh, like demo pages for us so we can see which one would look good with uh, what we're like our storytelling. And after we narrowed it down, like we still were like, you know, running for like two months, three months trying to get this thing done. Uh, beyond, like way beyond like where we were already supposed to have it completed. Yeah. Yeah. It's stressful enough. Yeah. I know it's stressful enough because, like, you know, first it's stressed because you're hoping that it gets back. Then it gets back and you're like, oh, like all those stress should be gone now. And they were like, hey, are we almost done with that comic? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, I'm sure that you're much more calm getting, like, yeah, the 95% of it done before the Kickstarter. And then hopefully, like, it's either done by the time it launches or it's, you know, done like during the launch and then you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very I have some like cool stress goals planned too, so I might it might take like a little bit longer, even though I pushed back the date so far where you guys think I would I would be um delivering early, but yeah. 
So oh. stretch goals on also. Oh, can, 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 can you share one uh, one of those stretch goals, or at least give a, a hint to what it might be? Oh man, I, there's so many that I love. So I think let's see. The one I love the most is that there's going to be a B story and um, Clary Girl about Clary Girl and her best friend Maggie having to um, protect a very annoying pop star. So one of the stretch goals is that you'll be able to hear Clary Girl's theme song sang by the pop star. That's awesome. Do you, do you have an artist that's already um, in mind to like create that or is it already created? Um, I, I have a artist lined up for that, and she's also going to, like, cosplay the character, so we get, like, a awesome, that's, like, little visual. That's awesome. Are you going to are you gonna do, like, a like a small music video for it kind of thing? Uh, not, like, a, a music video, per se, but, like, in nature, if that makes sense. Like, the little thing is going to go up like that, and there'll be, like, a picture for it. Oh, gotcha, yeah. And then another, another one that I'm excited about if we're fun you know if we're fun is that um uh i talked to a podcast about having my characters on the podcast like it's a really tense interview so that's, it, that's all awesome stuff to like all the all the goals are to like add to the story in a fun way even like a little five page short for uh, the back of play girl that's awesome. So, are you are you gonna do like uh, the podcast where like the, their camera's off, but there's a picture of them with like the the sound thing coming off? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's such a cool idea. I love adding like it's it's interesting because like when we mentioned world building before, like there are different ways to do world building. Like a lot of ours is focused on like this fake world that we've made, but other things like what you're doing is like fantastic. Like doing like almost bringing that world here where it's like, you can listen to a podcast with my character on it and there's a theme song. Um, would, would you be, uh, if, if you get that stretch goal, would you be like releasing that theme song? Like literally put it on Spotify kind of thing? I'm um, thinking about just doing it for the Kickstarter backers. Cause I, I did the same thing with uh, Base Wars Volume 1 where uh, <clears throat> Base Wars has his own theme song. It doesn't have any lyrics, but if you backed, um, base course then you can hear it that's I, awesome i sometimes post it but it's not like nothing i would sell yeah well the, the only reason i asked too is uh, that made me think of um what's it called the guardians of the galaxy like they like literally like having a mixtape and oh, yeah. uh i was gonna say like something fun that you could probably do is uh even if you don't add that song to it is to make like uh what's it called the playlist on spotify of like the themes like the just like the like this is volume one and like each, each of the chapters like has a theme song to it like just a mood setting song i'm way ahead of you there because i was actually gonna uh once it released tell people here's my spotify of you know what you can listen to if you want to read while listening yeah that's awesome See, that, that, that's that's really cool because like having having that extra um like just uh what's it called uh, just environment that you can put someone in like that's why movies are like if you it, movies are great but movies in an IMAX theater with like surround sound and like the, you feel you feel the bass shaking your seat when there's a big scary scene like that stuff like oh, yeah. pulls you in and so literally having music while you read a comic is just like a, another level to uh you know basically bring the comic book world back into you know a prominence is like hey here's how you can enjoy it in a new setting yeah, I, I have to go soon. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Guys, you guys can... Ask me one more thing or something. I'm, I'm... Yeah. Uh, where can people find you? Um, they can find me in multiple places. They can find me, um, Facebook. If you just search my name, I'll probably add you. You can find me, um, Clay Girl, uh, Facebook, and then Facebook, Facebook. Also, I'm on Instagram. Um. Chris Draw stuff seventeen underscore between uh, Chris and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks cool. for having me on, guys. We're sort of stay longer to talk, but uh, oh no worries. It was awesome. Uh, it was awesome getting to check out the comics and you know share a little bit about your world and announce the uh, you know the, the hopefully that theme song that'll get released. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the one I'm most excited for too. <laughs> Definitely. That's awesome. Well, yeah. yeah, thanks for coming on. Yeah, see you, man.
Yeah, what was that, episode nine?